In the palm of my hand, I hold the future of autumn water restorations. And this changes everything. But just before I show you what it is, let me tell you why this is so important. Getting into classic cars, you might have realized that the purchase is actually cheaper than the maintenance, especially if you don't do the work yourself. There was many times when I was asked, where will you get parts for this thing? And if you're lucky, you might have a junkyard nearby you that sources exactly the parts that you need. But those are usually the more expensive, bigger parts, whether those are body panels, engine or drive chain components. But no one talks about the small things which might be really pricey or even impossible to come by. And that's where this comes into play. This is a tiny 3D printer. Not a functioning one, of course, but it's a model. And you might see where I'm going with this. 3D printing is going to be the revolution. That is, if we come together and share our models. And if you go online, there's already thousands of people doing it. 3D printers are getting cheaper by the day and more accessible. So even if you don't have one, someone close to you might, and that's more than enough. And with all that said, let me tell you my experience of how 3D printing saved one of my classics. Once upon a time, among the leaders of the 125 enduro market, now forgotten by most, only found in the hearts of hardcore enthusiasts of the Italian 125 market. Today it sits being mostly a frame with two wheels and I am here with an attempt to restore it. Now I would usually say that restoring classic cars and bikes is simpler, but it does come with its own challenges, this time being the scarcity of parts. For this motorcycle I've been scouring the internet to find used parts for it but they are nowhere to be found or they are extremely expensive and simply not worth it. So I am attempting this on a bit of a budget, but I really do want to see what I can come up with. It was in a crash some time ago, so we are missing components such as blinkers. I'll be attempting to copy the turn signals to be able to place them on the front as well, amongst with some vital engine components which does sound scary, but the old ones are rotted out due to age. This is what we got now. So join me as I attempt to put this thing back together. Up first is a good old fashioned carburetor rebuild. This is the original carburetor from the motorcycle, which has been given a ultrasonic bath. There are people already out there 3D printing gaskets, but for this carburetor, I decided to get a whole new set of jets and with those comes a seal. So I didn't have to do that this time but I might be doing that soon for one of my other motorcycles. And then it was time to screw in that 3D printed intake manifold, which some of you already know might be pretty risky. So the intake manifold had to be somewhat flexible on the sleeve of the carburetor. So it was quite a challenge of figuring out what material to use for it. It had to be heat resistant and flexible, which is not that common. But we figured something out and it was time to put it on and see how it works. The first start was pretty simple, but soon after I realized that the engine was being flooded by the carburetor. And the next time I opened the valve on the reservoir, the fuel started pouring out of the carburetor, so I knew something was wrong with the float. Take the carburetor back out, disassemble it, adjust the float, put it back together, and we were good. Then it was time to put the rest of the motorcycle back together, including the fairings, which did have cracks in them, but they weren't beyond repair, so I decided to just cover those up a little bit. You know, battle scars make sense on this kind of motorcycle. The front fairings that I could find on the internet were upwards of 300 euros per side, so that was really out of the equation for this budget. But if you had to, you could copy these and 3D print them as well. You just need a big enough of a platform to do so. But most importantly, it was the turn signals that made the big difference. Finding turn signals for this motorcycle was near impossible. I did not succeed in finding turn signals for this motorcycle when looking for them on the internet. I typed in the exact model number into multiple searches with no avail. So this is where 3D printing really made a difference. We managed to take those housings from the back, copy them and make new turn signals for the front, which in my opinion look absolutely beautiful. Because the original style of turn signals on this motorcycle just makes sense. Now that intake manifold is sitting beautifully inside this motorcycle, I decided to even put some gasket material in there just to seal it off nicely, but 
It's really a matter of question how many heat cycles this thing could endure. So I'm not yet recommending this to anyone out there for a permanent fix. You're much better off with an OEM part. But if you want to try it yourself, you're free to do so. But that wasn't the end of this project, obviously. So the dashboard on this motorcycle was also broken. It turns out these things have an electric circuit inside of them. And apparently the manufacturer was really proud of that because there is nice lettering along the dash saying it is electronic. But that of course is exactly what failed. The circuit board actually burned. So now it was time to find a new one. 3D printing a circuit board was not a possibility for this one. So I turned to the internet and found something similar on eBay. So I found a dashboard for a RC50, the smaller engine variant of this motorcycle, bought that one and combined the two dashboards together to form the one that I need because the one for the 50cc had a much smaller top speed so they didn't even put the numbers on there and the one for the RC600 was completely different because that one's a four stroke the tachometer would show a completely different reading but combining the two two stroke dashboards i managed to fit one that would work on this motorcycle where 3d printing can come into play for this example is those little needles that show the rpms or the speed those can be copied and 3d printed and that is something we've tried previously as well other bits and pieces that i did have to figure out for this motorcycle where also the master brake cylinder for the front brake basically it was just completely shut uh, i could not get it to move anymore and a rebuilt one would cost way out of budget so i decided to do the next best thing and just get a whole different universal kind of master cylinder instead and a clutch lever to fit the downside to that was that i could no longer fit the original hand guards onto this motorcycle because those were molded precisely to fit the original master cylinder but that was something i was willing to leave out for the use of a front brake you can definitely find aftermarket uh, hand guards or even make them yourself while changing the master cylinder i did inspect the old brake hose as well and here i have it in my hand and it is well it being so crunchy was no good so i decided to again buy some aftermarket brake hose and fit it onto the motorcycle. This motorcycle put back together looks absolutely phenomenal and it sounds even better. The authentic two-stroke power is wonderful. Now, there are of course a couple more things to be done on this motorcycle before it hits the road. The tires are really old so a fresh set would be absolutely necessary and a tune-up would be pretty sweet you might have noticed this thing has a pts which stands for automatic power and torque system this is a mechanical power valve which chilera has used on their performance two-stroke models and let me tell you it makes a huge difference the apts adjusts the exhaust port timing depending on engine rpm to optimize both low end and high end power so there you have it 3D printing to save a classic motorcycle and make it street legal yet again. Hopefully this video makes you see the possibilities of 3D printing and how they can help you with your next project. By now some of you might have noticed this thing behind me and it is basically a very distant relative of the Gilera 125 that I just talked about but instead of the Dakar inspired vibe this one was meant for the track. So if you know what it is be sure to put it down in the comments below and thanks for watching.